All right, guys, it is the time for Sylvanas to get her rework. Now, Sylvanas is one that a lot of people have been asking for a rework, purely because she's one of those heroes that if you buff her too much because of the value of her trait, she's way too strong. So then they tried to nerf her trait and then buff her hero, and then her kit just kind of felt outdated at that point. That The whole purpose of her was to kind of split push, or at least push with an objective to turn off things that she just kind of didn't feel that great. So they've given her a watered-down version of her trait where you can still turn off uh, towers, you can still do things when you have an objective pushing, it is still very, very powerful. But it doesn't turn it off so long that you can kind of just sit back, destroy a turret without taking any damage. They've given her some changes to some of her abilities that make them actually quite difficult to use in the way that you want them to use. Her Q, for example, will fire at the closest enemy five times, prioritizing heroes, of course. And it can be a little bit tricky because it does more damage. There's a lot of talents that make it do more damage or give you more benefits if you hit the same target five times. So if you're moving around in a team fight, it's very easy for you to accidentally hit the wrong things because you can't just fire it when you want to and let go of it later. It's nice because you no longer need to like mash the button or at least hold it down the whole time. You can pretty much just press the button and it does its own thing. Because of that, the mana cost has also changed a little bit. They made it to where Shadow Dagger only spreads when she deals damage to the target. So if I fire a Shadow Dagger at someone, it'll spread only when you do damage to the target. It won't spread again if you do damage to the next target, though, so it pretty much will only spread the one time. Because this is generally a nerf, they're actually buffing the damage of this, and they're making it to where it has better talents along the levels. Her E does about the same thing that it did before, so we don't need to worry about that. And her trait is the main thing that has been changed a decent amount. So what you can do is the, let's talk about the passive version of it first, which is basic attacks infect enemies with Banshee's Curse for three seconds, stacking up to three times. You deal 25% more damage to the enemy with three stacks. So if we're attacking two, three, and now we're doing critting damage for 25% more damage, our Q will do more damage, our W will do more damage, Everything does more damage. And with the talents, you can actually get a really good amount of DPS on this character. So that's the thing that I think was really cool about this. The activatable portion of her trait makes it to where you can activate it to stun minions or camps. So say I toss a W here, I spread, I could press my trait, and now they are all stopped for three seconds. Now the thing about this is that the actual effect lasts 10 seconds. Um, so say for instance you wanted to keep things locked down, you can do one press of your trait and lock down everything for up to 13 seconds as long as you can keep abilities going to, to keep hitting them. As it lasts three seconds but your actual effect of applying the stun lasts for longer. With the increased damage to camps that she can pick up from Merc Queen at level four, it makes it to where you can actually go through and pop this and kill a camp still while they're stunned because the problem before is while she could do a camp without ever taking any damage you never really wanted to because it took her too long to do camps now you do more damage to camps and you can use the black arrows to make it to where you can uh, really just turn them off for 10 to 13 seconds, and then take out the camp within those 13 seconds. So generally, she's going to be a little bit better. If if you want to just play on a map and you want to double soak, you can either Possession or Unstable Poison to apply a lot of pressure. I think Possession in a lane that someone isn't in is going to be brutal, and then Unstable on lanes that people are in. So if you're constantly double soaking lanes, uh, both of those towns are really good. If you're not double soaking lanes, you can pick up Merc Queen and then start doing the Merc pressure and, and split soaking if you really wanted to. Anyways, let's get into the actual talents uh, as we go through instead of just talking about all of these. So she has one particular build that I want to play. That's the talents that I'm going to be picking, and I just kind of want to show them as we go through. But I'm going to go through the talents tier by tier and then just pick the ones of the build that I think might be kind of interesting. So Withering Fire grants attack speed and spell power. So the this is just a generally really powerful tool if you're going to be playing a DPS style of Sylvanas because it's going to increase the damage of whatever you want to do. And then Unfurling Shadows makes where each time an enemy hero within 
with three stacks of Banshee Curse is hit by a Shadow Dagger, its damage is permanently increased by 0.5. So to give you an idea, uh, we can go here and we can throw three stacks onto this, toss this out, and then if you look at this, it's stacking from the damage over time. So even if you just hit one person and keep the three stacks on them the entire time, you're going to get six stacks. So, um... Yeah, so it's going to be pretty neat in general because it's got a damage over time. It procs six times, so you should be able to get at least six stacks every time. However, there are ways to get a lot more than six stacks if you were playing it right. You could go through and be in a team fight and then kind of get it on two different people or possibly even three if you can kind of alternate it between a few and then maybe send out these and then fire off that and then just kind of fire them around trying to keep it on and you could actually get a really decent amount during a team fight like 17 that's eight percent more damage so put simply you should be getting them pretty quickly but uh it is going to be one of those kind of weird talents so we're gonna we're gonna reset those really quick finally banshee's curse is probably gonna be one of the standard ones in the new build if you want sustained damage put it it, it makes it to where when you're attacking people with three uh procs of your curse people are now slowed and you do one percent of their max health this is gonna be great for melting down tanks as there's options later in the build that make it to where you get longer attack range you can attack faster just different ways to kind of melt down tanks even faster so i do think it might be a pretty good talent but for the sake of the level one talent here and the build that i want to try out we're going to be getting this one level one then i already explained the level four talents when i was explaining the trait and again it's going to be very situational based off what you need possession now has been and change to where uh, possessing a catapult requires three charges and so you have to use all three of them to possess a catapult but generally uh, if you do it with a fort that's destroyed you'll pretty much have all your charges every time there's a catapult which is pretty cool and then there's uh i guess technically you should always have it for a catapult because it'll take 30 seconds for a catapult to enter lane and it takes 24 seconds to get three charges so yeah you should always be able to possess a catapult every lane if you wanted to Unstable Poison explodes on death. Merc Queen is what I'm going to be picking up as she already has a decent amount of wave clear and I'm not going to worry too much about the possession, but it depends on the map, of course. Level 7, Barb Shot makes it to where hitting the same enemy five times with Withering Fire causes the fifth shot to do 350% bonus damage. Now, if you combine that with the fact that you're increasing your spell power by 25%, that means you're going to be doing 25% more damage of 350% of one of your shots, meaning your last shot's going to hit really, really hard. And then there's uh, basic attacks reduce the Shadow Dagger cooldown. Remember, if you picked up this talent at 1, you're going to be increasing the uh, the damage of your Shadow Dagger. So if you want to play like Lunara as a as a Sylvanas, then this build could be really cool too using W talents. And I actually would really love to try that build out as well. I think I'm really going to like the new Sylvanas, to be honest. And then Festering Wound Haunted Wave applies Banshee's Curse, and it applies three stacks of it. So if you kind of wanted to do the same thing where you throw the wave out and then you turn off the whole wave, you could do that. But generally, that was never really a great thing to do because you want to save that for an escape. I don't think that this talent is going to be picked up. Uh, so for the case of the build that I want to do is this, and then they've changed mind control. It's a lower cooldown, it's a skill shot, and it silences and slows people, and you can do stuff while doing it. One of the major issues about mind control was not only that it could be cleansed by the enemy team, but you could also just be dove on when you did it. So you kind of stunned yourself whenever you tried to use mind control. This is why it wasn't ever used in like pro play, because all you had to do was find where the Sylvanas was when she's trying to mind control, and then you could just kill her very, very quickly. Now, it's just thrown out. Let me just kind of show you what it, it looks like. It's thrown out, and you can still be firing off abilities while it's being thrown out. So there's pros and cons about this new mind control. It's a skill shot now, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But at the same time, it is a little bit uh, more useful in the pro scene, as you can still kind of turn off one target very quickly and blow up people while you're still in a fight. We're going to be picking up Wailing Arrow, though, as that extra damage is really going to help out during the build that I'm trying to do and the extra spell power is going to inflate this the 500 damage that it does level 13 
Shadow Dagger lowers armor as well as it will lower armor of the main target by 25% and 10 armor for everyone else. So it's a, again, part of the W build will likely be about lowering the cooldown of your W, getting as much damage of the W, and lowering armor as often as possible to keep that up time. Then the auto attack build that we saw from level 1 or level, uh, these of the level 1s, you get an option to make it to where you get a longer attack range. And when you attack targets that have three stacks of Banshee's Curse, you shoot an untalented, untalented shot of Withering Fire. This means that you can constantly be dealing a lot of sustained damage. Let's say we were going to pick this up and we were going to just sit here and get them to three. You can see all this extra damaging that we're doing from this shot. So, um, how is this doing damage to this target? Oh, it fires the shot from the target. Oh, so it gives you damage to everything around you. And it's applying that to those. So you, instead of getting the armor, if you just wanted to keep stacking this talent, you'd probably go with that. As you could stack it on two different targets at the same time. I don't know, maybe that's kind of overthinking it. But yeah, so it's a cool talent if you just want that sustained damage. And it's just a, a generally neat thing as you can increase your attack speed and spell power and constantly increasing your attacks and spell damage. So you can really have a, a high DPS when you get this rolling as you're doing um, almost... Uh, 800 damage without actually pressing any buttons. 800 DPS without pressing any buttons. So that's really, really cool. But we're actually going to reset the talents and we're going to go back into this uh, build because I just wanted to see how much possible burst damage this build could do. Um, you still get the Windrunner. Windrunner is Haunting Wave can cast a second time for free within 5 seconds after teleporting. Um, teleporting with a Haunting Wave resets the cooldown of Withering Fire. So this doesn't allow you to do it twice. This just means you can Haunting Wave once and then Haunting Wave again. Um, I guess it's that's the same how it was before. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can fire off all of your cues, Haunting Wave, fire off all your cues, Haunting Wave, fire off all your cues. And uh, that's, I guess, still pretty neat. So the Shatter Dagger is the one that I wanted to bring up. I guess I could try this out with the Windrunner instead. Let me do that with Windrunner. Hold on. Let me reset talents. Let's go. Uh, I, this might actually be better with Windrunner. So the, the point of this build that I thought was interesting is... Get your spell power up, deal the bonus damage, and then with your bonus spell power, hit with a Wailing Arrow. And then I was going to lower the armor and see if I could do enough damage to burst one target really, really quick. Um, just to see how much damage it actually could do. But I think it would be better, instead of doing 25% more damage, instead you can do the combo three times. So... Essentially, this is what the build's going to look like. You pick the one target that you're going to want to try to kill. You're going to use your Qs until it does the crit damage. And then you're going to fire off. You're going to do your Qs and then you're, until it does the crit damage. And then you're going to fire off your Qs until it does the crit damage. And that's 6,000 damage on a single target at level 20. That's essentially double as Sylvanas' health. So the goal of this build could actually be a really powerful assassin and could even be a bit of a dive assassin as you don't need to do the full three combos. You can kind of charge in, you can cue someone, and then as they try to escape, you can charge in behind them, cue them, and then charge out of the fight. So could be a really cool build. Level 16, we see the Withering Fire grants movement speed. Uh, could be, again, same thing like Genji. You use the Withering Fire, and now you can kind of move around the battlefield a little bit faster. There is uh, Life Drain, makes it to where you heal for the damage dealt. I think that'd be cool for this auto attack based build. And then Will of the Forsaken just makes you unstoppable and you get 40% movement speed, but for three seconds. It's the longest unstoppable in the game, from my understanding, outside of like Divine Shield. So it's a pretty cool talent that'll likely be picked up the most in pro play. But uh, for the sake of this build, we're probably going to go to the movement speed. And then you have the Deafening Blast. You do 50% more damage in the center, meaning instead of 500 damage, we're doing 750 damage. And Or you could reduce the Withering Fire cooldown. So if you hit someone with a Withering Fire, you lower the cooldown of it. So in this build, if you want more sustained damage, you go with that. If you want more burst, you go with the armor removal. So the, the other build I wanted to try was just to see how much possible burst she could have if you did go with the lowered armor as well as possibly the the, uh, the upgrade to her ult. So you, if you were to use your Q first and then lower the armor and then use your ult, you could do, I mean, look at the, the short amount of time you could do like a thousand DPS. So five seconds, you can do 5,000 damage. You could pretty much blow up any target you wanted to if you did it correctly. Uh, so it's pretty much, let me toggle cooldowns really quick. And then toggle it again. You do the Q, the W, the R, and then pop. 
and boom, right there. So 5,000 damage in under 3 seconds. It's probably one of the largest bursts out of a lot of the sustained damage dealers, so I think that's a really powerful thing that uh, Sylvanas can have. So I actually really like Sylvanas. I think she's got a variety of builds if you need single target damage, if you need sustained damage, if you need burst damage, or if you need like AoE burst damage. So one of the other possible builds is just going this W talent and then you'd probably, again, it doesn't really matter which one you went, but let's just say you went for that in case you were fighting during in the middle of something. Basic attacks lower the cooldown of this. Let's say you picked up... Uh, I don't know, Wailing Arrow to get the burst, because you have the sustained damage, so let's get the burst. And then you can either go with the lowered armor, or you can make it to where you can get more sustained damage off. And But because you're lowering the cooldown, let's be a team player and lower some armor. This level doesn't really matter, but let's heal for the damage you deal, because you're going to take really slow fights anyways. So you're probably going to want to do this, and then it doesn't really matter. Again, you still probably want that burst damage. So if you're doing this build, you're going to want to just keep getting off as much damage as you possibly can, and try to spread out your curse whenever you can get some any sort of spread. And you're lowering the cooldowns pretty well. I mean, if you see this this cooldown, if you're hitting three enemies, you're lowering the cooldowns fast, and you're stacking up this quest really fast too. So it's a seems like a really powerful tool for increasing the damage. I could say you'd probably get this up to like seventy or eighty percent, and it. I mean, I could even let me just keep doing this. Let's just keep auto attacking this, and let's uh, let's also hit the complete quest. Oh, that went way too fast. So now I'm doing 4,500% more damage. I didn't think that would go that high. Uh, but as you can see, it could get pretty high damage if you needed it to. Generally, I think that would be a pretty cool talent. And I think our playstyle is going to be a lot harder than it used to be, which is kind of neat. I like them making heroes that are stronger but harder to play, as it really kind of makes it to where you can kind of get into a hero, but you feel like there's a lot you can learn. Sylvanas seems like a character right now that there's a lot you can learn. There's a lot of like different things you should be paying attention to. You need to, you can't just toss a W and walk away. You have to toss a W, auto attack at the right time and then you have to walk away, possibly auto-attack again to spread it to someone else. And then you also have your trait that you're going to only want to use your trait while you're using the right targets because now you have to use it at the right time. You don't want to just keep tossing it randomly. Um, <laughs> I think that's way too much damage right now. And it stacks indefinitely. So, I mean, if you really wanted to, you can probably complete quests a few more. Oh, well, let me do that again. Um, yeah, so that's the new Sylvanas. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that she's going to be... Uh, a strong hero. It looks like she has a lot of sustained damage. It looks like she has a lot of burst if you go a bursty build. I think generally she's going to be a lot of fun now. Uh, she still has her split push, and I almost think it's stronger now uh, to split push purely because she does way more damage. Uh, she just can't do it as often, er, like for as long. So you can't just like split push for like 10 minutes, but you'll do a lot more in short split pushes. Uh, compared to other split pushes. So we might see her be a little bit more annoying as quickly going in, destroying a tower, then leaving. Quickly going in, destroying a tower, then leaving. And then right as an objective starts, she quickly takes a, a fort and then is spawning catapults for the rest of the time. So uh, I think that she's pretty neat in that sense. Or you can just join your team and either go a, a route where you're just uh, dealing sustained AoE damage, sustained single target damage. I don't know. I think she's pretty cool. So let me know what you guys think about the new Sylvanas in the comments below. Uh, and feel free to check out all the rest of my videos. Oh, also, I'll be having some Sylvanas gameplay probably later in the week.